Hello class, welcome. Today I will be doing my YouTube project on um, images for visual culture. So I come to you today to discuss these two prints I have in my house of Claude Monet's Bouquet of Sunflowers and Water Lilies. Both of these images I purchased when I visited his home in Giverny, and I love the memories attached to them when it reminds me of the time that I lived in Paris a couple years ago. Um, specifically, these two prints remind me of his home's garden and the quintessential impressionistic style with the coloring and brush tones. During the, jet, the, during the day, when I'm not doing um, my program for Art history, my job is an instructor and teacher for elementary students, teaching them lessons on famous artists, and that includes a project inspired by their works. Monet is, is always an artist that is chosen for such study and works, specifically his infamous water lilies. I say this to point out the notion of studying in this class the replication and appropriation of images. Even when looking up the sunflower painting, I came across numerous YouTube tutorials showing how to recreate the same painting as your own. What makes this interesting is that in this class, or sorry, what makes this interesting is later we hear from an artist later on, Frank Stella, um, an important artist after the art expressionist movement, and he moves towards minimalism, and he was quoted to say that one learns about painting by looking at art and imitating other painters. So this had me thinking, what makes Monet's work of art as understood through history and, and an inspiration to so many? What, what makes his work a really a work of art and not just an image. When looking at Monet's work, he's a central figure in the Impressionistic movement using that characteristic brushstroke and very thick application of paint. It makes me wonder, looking at these Im images such as these, um, are these just as important as an, imp as an inspiration? You don't... Um, you don't get that same thickness of paint in the of when you look at a, a replication of an image like this versus if you were to see it in person. Um, and when an artist does this and studies such works, um, in my mind, this becomes more an object of study, a physical piece, almost like a textbook. Um, in my mind, that brings breaks down that barrier of fine art if it's now just a historical. Um, object. When looking, um, again, when looking at such prints as, as mine, the thickness of the paint and the three-dimensional dimensionality is lost versus if I was um, at a museum and seeing the actual canvas work that um, Monet worked with. But, but still, the image is still there. You still have the impression of a sunflower, sunflowers and a vase, or you still have the impression of of this um, lake and water lilies. Um, what's also interesting is that with prints such as these, they come in multiple sizes. You can get um, a size such as this or very large or even smaller, or even you know, a magnet for your refrigerator. But again, the image is still there. Um, but it's just, it's just a, an interesting um, understanding to look at it as in a replica versus an image and what makes the difference between a replica and a print versus the the real painting. It's the still the same image but yet different. Um, as Sturkin and Cartwright point out, as quoted saying, taste is not inerrant in particular people, but rather it is learned through exposure to social and cultural institutions that promote certain class bred assumptions about correct taste. Institutions like museums function not only to educate people about the history of art, but to instill in them a sense of what is tasteful and what is not, what is real art and what is not. If looking at art museums and galleries as now a place of study for artists, this again brings a new spin on such prints and images as, as almost um, taking that study 
and bringing it home. And if we're going to study from the real, then can we not study from these printed images? Which again brings me back to these two prints. For me, they are deeply personal, reflective, and a token of a memory, yet they are just a physical object, an appropriation of the real paintings of Monet. Um, but for some, such as an artist, perhaps looking at these prints, it may be their study um, that brings them, this, these prints might be the bridge between what brings their works into their own studying and, and getting the style of Monet. For others, it may just be a pretty picture that they may see and recognize, um, or it, for others, it might be the only one of the few very works of art that they're familiar with, um, it being a very well-known, um, both of them being very well-known images. Um, whatever the purpose or meaning, um, such works or images have the power to bring out so many different reactions. And that is why I find it interesting to, to use these two prints and use the conversation surrounding both of them to really bring that question, are, are these art or are these just images? And so with that, um, I will conclude and um, tell everyone thank you. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and good luck with our last week of class. Thanks.